All right, welcome everybody. This is Bad Rich. It's a new episode of Let's Linux. The lolban says that this is the Compton setup for i3WM episode, and we're gonna look into the compositor known as Compton um, and how to set it up, and especially for i3 and very specifically for tab layouts in i3. But I think there will be information here that can be interesting for most people using Compton or trying to setting set it up correctly or correctly let's let's just dig into it move this window to workspace one um, Compton is a compositor this is the official Compton github I think um, with some useful information in this readme file we can see here that Compton is a lightweight compositor which makes it perfect for i3wm because i3wm it doesn't come with a compositor and um, a compositor is it, it helps the display server uh, exorg to to um, paint the windows and it can uh, apply kind of special effects to them for example the transparency or or drop shadows uh, some window managers even uh, uh, paints um, window decorations for example title bars uh, they can also uh, make do animations on the windows um, one popular animation is uh, that uh, a, a window squiggles when you move it and uh, uh, when a window gets transparent when you drag it for example that is handled by the compositor but it also helps with with like useful things uh, like screen tearing and stuff and, and for me that is the reason I use it but uh, it can be really cool to to enable transparency and stuff and, and look like a hacker man and, and that is what we're going to look at today and um, you can install Compton it's, it's a very very common package uh, almost everyone who uses i3 uses Compton also so you can get it from from uh, pacman or apt or or any other package manager I guess I recommend you reading this readme also looking into this wiki page on, on in this uh, github repository uh, there are lots of useful information here arc wiki always al always a good source for for these types of information um, and of course the man page for Compton. This is actually the best uh, 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 source because uh, as you can see here you can uh, use a lot of command line options so you can basically set up uh, Compton with just command line options and um, some people do this um, but if you want uh, more it, it, it's not uncommon that you end up with a lot of settings and then it's better to have them in a, a config file and I don't know if this is always the case but at least when I installed Compton now with the Pacman I got this uh, default configuration file located in etc xdg slash compton dot um, and I think Compton read this file if you don't have any other uh, options set but if you have a file uh, in uh, at this location in your home folder dot config slash compton conf uh, compton will will read this uh, this uh, setting file so a good way to get started is to copy this default config file to your home folder here so you can start editing it because this default config file that is uh, like a hidden little gem when it comes to Compton configuration file. Now I just copied this cp command he here and uh, copied um, the default file to my home folder. Now we can try to open this in Sublime. Uh, Compton conf. This is how the default uh, uh, Compton configuration file looks like 
I would like to do this first and foremost, just enable my simple syntax sublime package. Uh, so we get some highlighting for the comments and as you can see there are a lot of comments in this default uh, configuration file and that is very good because it explains uh, a lot of these options because the options can be quite um, difficult to understand uh, since it's uh, very dependent on your graphic drivers and uh, you can set like really fine-tuned Compton and, and when it's set uh, correctly, then, then these options make a big difference. But for this win video, I will use XRender here as the backend. But uh, usually GLX is the better choice, if you can get it working good. But if, if you get problems, issues, then uh, try XRender instead and, and it will probably work better. But it doesn't really matter now for this video, and as I said, it. It all depends on your graphic card and, and uh, your drivers and stuff like that, which options are best. But we will not look into any of those types of settings in this video. Uh, that depends on the drivers, only like transparency and shadows and how to set it up for i3. So let's get started here. When the Compton file is uh, copied to the home folder, then you can just type Compton in a terminal, for example. And now Compton is active and uh, there's not really any difference in on the screen here but when I open this floating window we can see there is a faint uh, box or drop shadow here if I exit Compton by interrupting it with Control C you can see now the drop shadow disappeared here and if I enable it again now the drop shadow is back and the drop shadow is the first thing I thought we could look at. It's actually very straightforward. This is not complicated at all. You can turn off the shadow all completely here with just setting this shadow equals true. Set it to false instead. But one thing I would like to show you is this. Because you can uh, set the different color for the shadow. And color values, they are uh, in this format. It's uh, a value from zero to 1. So 1 is 100% and 0 is 0% and 0 0.1 is 10%. So if we set this uh, shadow color here red to 100% or 1 uh, and uh, reload this Compton, now you can see I have a red shadow. And I wanted this because I don't know if you can see this but I can. There is a faint red line here for example and that is um, because yeah all windows have shadows or most windows have have shadows and if you have a layout similar to mine with tiled uh, containers without any gaps then uh, shadows on tiled windows doesn't make any sense and this is a uh, easy fix uh, is to disable uh, shadows for every all types of windows except uh, floating windows and, and that is how I like to set it up but you can uh, fine-tune this as well here and, and uh, have um, disable shadows for, for specific windows but if we add um, these two rules to this shadow exclude list here. I, I will of course link all, all these uh, settings that I do here and uh, a simple conf Compton config file. I will link it in on my GitHub or upload it to GitHub. So now uh, when I added this rule, this means that uh, all windows that are not floating, that is what the exclamation mark means here, it negates this, so non-floating windows will be excluded from the shadow uh, effect, meaning that only floating windows will have a shadow. Now if we run Compton, the floating window have, have a shadow, but now this uh, artifact here is gone, uh, and other windows as well. I know, for example, Rofi has also a shadow if this uh, rule isn't present, but you can disable that in other ways as well. You can add Rofi to the class here or something. Whatever. Shadow part is done. 
let's see what I wrote next. Uh, opacity. This is probably uh, one one of the reasons that many people uh, use Compton to enable op transparency or adjust the opacity level. Uh, uh, um. And let's just start here. One uh, thing we can do is to set this inactive and active opacity here. To s uh, and it's the same thing here. It's a, it's a value from 0 to 1. And 1 means fully opaque, no transparency at all. 0 0.8 here, that means 80% opaque or 20% transparent. And now I have set both uh, active and inactive windows to be, uh, or let's do this, let's set active to one. Now when I run Compton, now we can see uh, the screen looks really weird because now I can see the windows, uh, all the windows in the containers, uh, these tabbed containers are visible. Uh, they are kind of shining through and this um, I think this is, uh, um, this is because I, I have tabbed containers. All windows in these uh, containers are uh, have a transparency of 0 0.8 if they are not visible. So that's why you can see all of them. And they are kind of stacked with a focused window in each container is on the top of the stack. And then I think it's a focus order of, of, of them. Yeah, so now, now in, in this container we can see three different windows here and this is completely, it, you, you, it's really hard to work uh, <laughs> with this and it, it, it just doesn't look good. Um, but there is a good little fix for this. Uh, just as uh, shadow uh, exclude rules you can add opacity exclu exclu exclude rules. So. They are a bit different, but uh, we will try them. If we add this here, we can do this actually. Uh, this is really quickly how opacity rules works. Uh, first you enter the, the value of opacity. For example, one fully opaque, zero fully transparent. That means that this window uh, that matches this criteria will be completely transparent, invisible. Um, and the criteria here, uh, it checks if the window is hidden. This is like a special atom. Um, that uh, hidden windows have but uh, and in i3 um, in with tabbed containers all tabs or yeah, yeah all tabs that aren't uh, uh, focused or active in the container have this uh, atom so they are uh, this criteria will be met and that means that they will be fully transparent so Let's just try this out and see see how it looks like. You, I think, it will be easier to see that. And let's enable some wallpaper, <laughs> office space, destroying a printer. Maybe it's a bit light. No scary, scary guy. This guy I can blur it also. Okay, okay. So now it uh, it looks a lot better. We only see like the the one window in each container. So this is the rule you use and now you can also see that the active window is fully opaque but inactives are transparent so if you would like you can use this uh, but some people maybe like this better to have the same transparency on all the windows no matter if they are uh, active or not um, the problem with setting setting it up like this is that now all windows will be 80% transparent. And no problem here with Sublime. Clavaro looks good. But Pale Moon, you, I, I don't think you want uh, the browser to be transparent. Well, let's see if I have uh, MPV here. Yeah, this is MPV and that is also transparent. Maybe not so visible, but yeah, you can see the background shining through on the video. and. I don't think anyone would like that. So then we just add some some um, opacity rules for those also. 
think I pre-made some of them here. Like this. Another thing uh, is that, I don't know, I, I think it's a bit annoying, but actually now it, it looks okay. But you, the windows actually fades or they blink in or they fade in from 0% here up to 80% uh, when I activate a new tab here. I think this blinking effect can be a bit annoying. We will look into this also. But let's try this now because now I uh, uh, have two opacity rules here and for some reason opacity rules they are not 0 to 1 they are 0 to 99 not 100 100 doesn't work I think that is equal to 10 or something but 0 to 99 99 is fully opaque here and now I make pale moon and MPV fully opaque and you need both the class name and you also need this rule um, yeah we can yeah let's let's do this first uh, Restart Compton looks just like before, but now Pale Moon is fully opaque. And now it's even more visible this blinking fading effect that I was talking about. Uh, and this is because uh, in this default config, uh, Windows fades uh, by default. So if I also, you can see, maybe it's hard to see, it's quite fast the fading. I think you can change the time with this delta. Now the fading should be slower. Yeah, now I guess it's easier to see. And now it will also be slower when I change tabs. And now it, I really don't like this. When you switch tabs, I would not like any fading at all. But I, I'm kind of happy with it on floating windows. It, it It's okay. I don't really like it on those either. But if we, I really recommend you add this because just as with opacity and shadows, also fading have uh, exclude an exclude list here. And if you add the uh, the same rule here, uh, all non floating windows uh, should never fade. Save this, reload the conf, Compton conf, and now when I switch tabs, you see it's uh, it's much more instant, uh, no weird blinking effects. So this is basically how you do a basic setup with transparency in transparency in Compton. Um, but there are drawbacks to, to using uh, this method as well. As you could see here, every time we add, um, we add, um, or when we start a program that we don't want to have as transparent, we have to add a rule here, a 99 rule for each windows that we don't want transparent. And, and you know, these are the windows that you don't know about when you install a new program and spe especially like, for example, games or, or let's say GIMP or, or a image editor or something like that. You really don't want those transparent. And then you, every time you install a new program, you have to figure out the class name and add it here. It's not a big deal, but it's kind of annoying. So I like to have this set the other way around and make all windows fully opaque by default. And instead of uh, choosing which windows I want to have um, uh, fully opaque, I set rules for those that I want to be uh, transparent instead. So let's make uh, Sublime here 80% for, for example. We can do this for now. Now if I reload, now all windows except Sublime should be transparent. You can see everything else is fully opaque. And this is easier because if, yeah, and at least for me, I, I, I like to, I, I just have a couple of windows that I can accept transparency on. And, and that is basically those that we can see on the screen here, URXVT, uh, Thunar and Sublime. So then I would just add rules for those. Now we can also see uh, what this rule really does. If I remove this second part here from the rule, oops, save it, reload it. 
everything looks like normal but hmm yeah i guess it works when i only have one program but let's say i also have your xvt here just want to show you this there now also your xvt are transparent sublime is not uh, or sublime is clavaro isn't and here we also have your xvt and now you can see that we can still see sublime behind uh, and or your xvt because now this rule have um, uh, comes out after this one so that's why you can still see them maybe I just came to think about this. Maybe this works because that would be a cleaner if we have this as the last rule. Uh, then we would never need those double uh, rules, which I guess would be a little bit better. No, it didn't work. So you need to have this second part uh, in your transparency rules if you are using tabbed or stacked containers in i3. like this okay let's restart it again and pale moon is not uh, another thing is that full screen windows well it can of worked maybe this uh, non-floating window takes care of that because i remember i needed to set the um, no, 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 uh, it is because all of them, yeah, we, we take this in the next uh, step here, because the, I don't use transparency in my regular uh, workflow, because um, I just think it's annoying, I constantly get uh, tired of the wallpapers and start browsing for new wallpapers, and they, I, I, I just think it's distracting uh, most of the time and rather have a solid color and no transparency at all. I, I usually never see my wallpaper. But not too long ago, there was a guy on the i3 subreddit who uh, uh, had made this script, Flash Focus, which is really, really cool. Check out this little demo GIF we have here. It flashes the windows uh, when they get focus. And uh, it uses the compositor to... Uh, uh, do this animation you can see it is animated this this uh, flash also uh, and even if the windows aren't transparent when they get focused they they can yeah i think you understand how it, uh, what what happens so i needed to enable transparency to to try this out and you can install it if you have Arc. It is in the user repositories. If you use Debian or Ubuntu, then you can install it with pip like this. And when it is installed, it is really easy to start using. You can see here. Uh, flash focus. And then I think it's dash dash help. Yeah, and here, here we have a very uh, good short uh, help screen, how it works. You set uh, an opacity here with the opacity option, uh, which is the uh, same as in Compton, of uh, a number between 0 and 1, how much opacity you want. And then when a window gets focus, it will uh, become yeah, it will animate down to this value. And then for uh, you set a time if you want to. So how many milliseconds before it returns to the default opacity. And then you, you can disable the animation with the S or simple flag here. And then even more fine tunings of the animation. So let's just uh, run it here. Flash focus. And then let's set opacity to 0.8. Or maybe more, 0 0.6. Um, yeah, and run it like this. And now, when I activate the window, you can see we get this fading, flashing thing. 
but when I activate whoops, these windows, uh, URXVT and Sublime, uh, we don't get then uh, this uh, blink operation. And that is because uh, this, these rules are in effect. They have kind of a priority over flash focus. So uh, if you want, if, if you are using transparent windows on most of your, of your windows and you still want to use this flash focus, then you can do this trick. Uh, I terminated it with control C because there is also, let's do the help again. There is also the default opacity option here. And that is also a, a number between 0 and 1. And that is the, the uh, opacity to return to after it have blinked the window kind of. So if I would do a flash focus opacity 0 0.0. Six. And then we have default opacity, and there we can set 0 0.8. So now we, it will blink to 0 0.6, and then it will return the opacity to 0 0.8. We still don't get any effect on these windows, because they, uh, uh, Compton rule, uh, still have priority. But now if I activate Tuner here, for example, it goes down to 0 0.6, then returns to 0 0.8. But this is now true also for um, all windows, even uh, this window, which is kind of annoying. So, to, 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 to uh, fix this, and we also still doesn't have a blinking effect here, but now we can actually remove these uh, uh, 80% rules here. We still need this, uh, and we also, yeah, this is a rule that I like to have to have, to be sure that all my floating windows are uh, always fully opaque. I never want them uh, transparent. So now, if we reload Compton again, we also exit this flash focus guy here. No. Everything. Ah, that's right. When you're using tabbed containers like this, you might need to uh, switch tabs to, to reset them, kind of. But now it doesn't seem to work, anyways. Some of them doesn't. Ah, now it works. Uh, the, the, this is the thing. When, when you're working with Compton and trying to set it up, it, it, sometimes you get uh, different results and, and you kind of have to do things like this switch tabs and, and do that. But now you can see, even if the windows are transparent, they still blink. But now we need to add these 99 rules again for example pale moon and mpv here we never want them uh, transparent so then we add these rules again and they will have pr priority and uh, they will never be transparent even if they are blinked with flash focus so now mpv here fully opaque but when it uh, enters uh, full screen now it is uh, transparent again and that is because we have this rule um, so that means that we need to add a rule here for also full screen windows and we can do that with here I have it because there's an atom for full screen also now Compton 
MPV, full screen, not opaque or transparent. Perfect, everything works now and flash focus works. Um, I actually uh, run some, something like this. I have this to maybe 85 and um, this to 90 percent opacity and then I disable the animation this is how I like it you see now it's more it's a more subtle blink it's also too long time because you can set the time option here also to maybe I think 200 milliseconds is enough now the blink is much faster and and this is how I like to uh, to, to run flash focus but it's all up to you. I also rather have uh, a solid color like I have now and, and, and use flash focus. And then, yeah, I think the, 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 this is a, a, how I like it. If, if I'm using transparency at all. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I think I covered everything that I wanted to do. Well, I got this guy also. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that also. Flash focus, uh, it also comes with uh, a command that is called flash window. So if you run flash window, let's set the desktop top background again. Another one, another one, another one. Flash, uh, you see there, uh, uh, you, you never, you always change background, it's just annoying. If I run this flash window, no flash underscore window for some reason there I, I don't know if you could see it here um, but the window actually flashes really quick when I run this and this is just a handy little command that you can bind to a key binding just as it says here in the readme so so if you for example are away from the computer for a while and come back then you can just press this key binding and it will blink the window uh, but I actually made my own version of this flash window for uh, f um, function because when I first uh, installed this program, I don't think I, the flash window, th this is one of the later uh, things he added to, to the script. So I made a script that I call refocus and it does the same thing. It also flashes the window, but it does so in a different way because flash focus uh, that only changes the, the transparency of, of uh, the window. Maybe we should use this instead. Flash window. More visible in this big window and refocus. It does the same thing, almost, but it actually refocuses the window. It creates a, a hidden container and kills that container instantly, uh, and by doing so, you refocus the container and there are other use cases for this than just flashing a window for example I have this uh, title bar here that displays the dimensions of a window this doesn't update when I change size here for example well now uh, a, a different window got focus I think but as you can see it doesn't update these coordinates but if I run refocus it will update because that pings my polybar hook here so that, that's another use case for this refocus. And also, uh, it is faster than flash window. It's not a big deal, but you can see here 20 milliseconds, 70 milliseconds. So it's a, it's, it's a bit faster. But if you don't need these focusing windows at all, then it's probably better to use flash window. But if you don't use uh, uh, flash focus at all, then it's probably better to use refocus. Just wanted to let you know, uh, and I hope I got you started here with Compton. It's uh, quite fun to play around with, and but uh, I don't use transparency. I think it's too distracting to see the wallpaper like this. It's a little bit better if you blur it, then it gets less distracting. But another thing is that you kind of have to use... Um, a uh, 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 dark theme also because transparency in my opinion doesn't look so good with light themes for example solarized 
light here. If I enable that theme, whoops, oh, no. Mondo. For some reason, it doesn't update this this file, but whatever. Um, you see, now it's it doesn't look insanely bad, but it looks much better with a dark background. Uh, when you have transparency enabled, so that's um, God damn it, Mondo 80s, and I'm using 80s uh, color theme here. By the way, it's made by Chris Thompson. It's the Tomorrow 80s theme. I really like these Tomorrow themes. They are very good color themes. Um, but I think that's enough for this video. Mm. I say thank you so much so much for watching. I think that the next video will be about a new script that just that I made. I just got an ID and tried it out and it's working pretty well. It's a little Rofi menu uh, that displays all key bindings in i3 and I can actually uh, execute them from Sublime here. And as you can you can also see this uh, white on black that is the actual key binding. And these symbols are short names for the keys. So hash mark means super key. This means control key. And this plus that's uh, uh, shift. So this is super shift and control and S is this command. And if I select an item here, it will <laughs> do that command. And it fetches all this info from i3. Uh, we will look into how, how to make that script because uh, I like to do those kinds of videos. But that's the next time. I say thank you for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, 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 bye.